All right, so this is Len Davis with Pangeality Productions, and I'm here in the McLean Creek Nature Trail area just outside of Olympia, Washington, the capital of our great state. It is December 10th, 2011. Today is my sixth wedding anniversary with my lovely wife, so I love you, babe. And I'm just happy to say that as part of my work, I get to do some amazingly engaging things and go some crazy places. Uh, one of my recent clients is the Puget Sound Salmon Commission and have really been enjoying helping them to tell their story. It's an association of about a hundred small boat commercial fishermen and part of their struggle is really showing how the small boat approach uh, needs to be preserved and part of their struggle is in fisheries and wildlife management through legislation and policy in advocating why they need to remain part of you know, uh, viable in the face of giving more and more of the fishery away to the more commercial operations. And we're out here in this nature creek in a stream to be able to help tell the story and show the life cycle of the salmon in better articulating why the approach of the small board fishermen is so integral. So we're here on the McLean Creek, which is this stream through which these Kita and Chum salmon, who were born here four or five years ago, and spawned here, I'm gonna show you what that looks like in a second, spent a couple weeks or a couple months here, made their way through to the mouth of this river, through an estuary, which is a body of water where the salt water and the fresh water mix, and then spend the vast majority of their lives out in the ocean. When they leave here, you know, so they start out as an egg that's you know smaller than a jelly bean, maybe bigger than a grain of rice, and then by the time they're leaving here, they're you know maybe the length of your index finger, they go out and spend a couple of years out in Puget Sound off the coast of Washington or the coast of BC or out in South uh, Alaska. And then they come back here at the end of their lives. And this is where we are today. This is kind of the peak of the season where these Kita and Chum salmon are swimming upstream to lay their eggs, you know, if they're the females and if they're the males to fertilize the eggs. And this is what it looks like. 10 years ago when I moved to Seattle and I heard, you know, oh, the salmon is such a, a central sort of pillar of this regional ecosystem, you know, I really didn't understand what that meant, but when you come out here and you see thousands of salmon dying by the riverside, you get a sense of the cycle of life. So check this out, what this is looking like. These are huge Kita and Chum salmon who are swimming up this stream to spawn. So they're basically coming here to die, but before dying to leave their eggs and their legacy behind. It's a little hard to see, I'll show you, but those are dead salmon. You know, some of them are up to two feet in length. I'm not sure how much they weigh, but they're big and juicy. And these are ones that are still alive, all scattered up the stream. There are dead salmon along the banks. And this is kind of a demonstration site. So the county has built this platform and used this area as a educational resource where they bring groups of school children and others to tell the story. I'm here with my colleagues, the president of the Salmon Commission, Chairman, Chairman sorry, Dave Harsala, and this is Anne Marie, who works with the county primarily on uh, stormwater management because it's not only about protecting habitat, we learn more and more and keeping these streams nice and clean and clear, but it's also about the way we manage urban runoff and all the pollutants that are taken by the runout into the larger bodies of water and how that affects it. Is that an accurate assessment? Yes, it is. Cool. So, you know, coming down here along the banks, you get a sense of the life, in this case of a Kita salmon, or a chum salmon. These are just dead salmon here building up in the river. They've laid their eggs and died. And then these guys are just in the process of doing their thing. and just littering the banks of the river are big dead salmon. So these are Kita or Chum salmon. When I was out with the Fam Salmon Commission a month ago fishing on Puget Sound, these are the same fish that were, they're catching out there in Puget Sound, except these ones didn't get caught. They made it into the streams. And, you know, we're about three or four miles up into the stream here from the mouth of the river past the estuary and it's just littered with dead salmon. So it smells kind of funky here, but these rotting carcasses, after they've laid the, you know, the eggs for the next generation, these rotting carcasses become the food for 
all kinds of insects, for birds, for eagles, for bears. And so, look at how huge this fish is. And just all along the banks there are both dead and living fish. So the female salmon comes up here to spawn, uh, to, I'm sorry, to lay her eggs. And she will use her tail and carve out a little pool, a little eddy that's kind of protected. And the goal is to scrape away all the silt and scrape away the uh, gravel, lay her eggs, giving the signal that's sort of like the spawning language to the male who comes in and basically fertilizes the eggs with what's called his milt. And then she sweeps gravel over the eggs in order that with the flow of water, new oxygen is coming into the pool and it's taking away the excrement. So the eggs are fertilized, they start to grow. I think it's called a smolt, about the size of the finger when they leave the stream and spend time in the estuary. Their whole physiology and their whole chemistry, I don't know if those are the right words, but basically their bodies are adapting to the change from the fresh water to the salt water. Uh, they live their lives out in the ocean, eating all of the food out there, and then come back here to die and bring all of that nutrition and all of the uh, substance that, you know, the growth of their bodies. And by the time they come back here, they're basically just living off of their fat. It's the time of the, uh, the year in the stream where there isn't a lot of nutrition, new nutrition for them to feed on. Um, and so they're coming and living off the fat in their bodies, and then they're dying and all those nutrients are getting plowed back into the whole system, whether it's through, uh, you know, an uh, animal who comes here and feasts on the carcass and then drags it up into the woods and it decomposes and becomes part of the soil and then shows up in the DNA of the trees, or whether it's feeding the bugs uh, that other small fish will eat, that other species of salmon will then come and feed on those, those smaller fish. So, just loving it. Amazing. It's Len Davis with Pangeality Productions, and we are here checking out the life cycle of the Kita salmon in a forest stream outside of Olympia, Washington, all in support of helping the Puget Sound Salmon Commission tell their story as small boat commercial fishermen and helping the public to understand the life of the salmon cycle uh, in every way through the ecology and the commerce uh, and the storytelling and the nature and the food and just loving it. So stay fresh. This is what the salmon journey is all about.